Step forward. Somebody tell me when it's all over. <laughs> Who are you? I am Oz, the great and powerful. Who are you? I am Dorothy, small and meek. And we've come to ask... Silence! Too many crickets. The great and powerful Oz knows why you've come. Step forward, Tin Man. You dare to come for a heart, do you? You clinking, clattering collection of collagenous junk? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Hardly what we found this yellow bird. Quiet! And you, Scarecrow, you have the audacity to ask for a brain? You billowing bale of bulbing fodder! Enough! And you, lion? You should be ashamed of yourself for frightening him when he's come to you for help! Silence, whippersnapper! The beneficent Oz has every intention of granting your request. But first, you must bring me the broom of the Wicked Witch. The broom of the Wicked Witch? The broom of the Wicked Witch? Oh, Look, no. that way to the Witch's Castle. Oh, we no. can do this. We can, yes, we can go down. Oh, holy cow. Oh, yeah, Our friends take a perilous walk through the dark wood on the way to the witch's castle when suddenly a flock of flying monkeys descend upon them and Dorothy and Toto are taken directly to the witch's dark castle. a little malfunction here. <laughs> it stayed on so well the first <laughs> service. Pause. Breathe deeply. Nice little doggy. Oh, what a nice little dog. <laughs> you take him. <laughs> Hideous. What are you going to do with my dog? And you, my dear, what an unexpected pleasure. How kind of you to visit in my loneliness. What, what are, why, why do you have Toto? What are you going to do with him? Certainly, when you give me those ruby slippers. Oh, oh well, the Wicked dog. Witch of the North told me I could not give them to you. Very well, throw that dog into the river and drown him. Oh, no, 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 you can have the slippers. Just give me Toto back. Oh, oh that's a good little girl. I knew you'd see reason. Let me have those slippers. Oh, look what you I didn't do it. I didn't do it, but can I have Toto back now? No, fool that I am. I should have remembered. Those slippers will never come off as long as you're alive. me. These things must be done delicately or you hurt the spell. 
you're a little ahead of your game here. <laughs> run, Toto, run. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which is more than you will. You've been more trouble than you're worth. You and your little silly dog. But it'll soon now be over. Do you see this? <laughs> That's how much time you have to be alive. And it isn't long, my little pretty. I can't wait to get those shoes. I'm so frightened. I'm so frightened. Oh, Auntie M, I just want to go home. Yes, well, your Auntie M, she's not going to save you. I'm going to get you, my little pretty. <laughs> the Unity Players. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm magically Kristen instead of Dorothy. <laughs> uh, it's fun! And it, yeah, thank you. These are, if you can't see the ruby slippers, they are our full capacities. And so I need to be in these to face the Wicked Witch, and so do you. And that's what we're talking about today, is facing up to the shadow nature and, and actually embracing it and reeling it in, but also going eye to eye and toe to toe with the Wicked Witch, the, the deepest of those shadows. So we know how all these stories end, right? The Wizard of Oz and every story you can think of, it ends even though we're, we've left you at the cliffhanger, right? In, in, in the dark wood, now back into the witch's castle and, and the tick-tock of the timer, not knowing if Dorothy's going to be saved or not, right? But yet, there is that knowing that even though we're caught up in the story, that the light always wins, you know? The truth always breaks free and sets us free, as Jesus said. And so knowing that, then we can kind of bolster our courage to move through the haunted spaces, if you will, the darker corners of our beings and of our world and know that in the end, the divine light breaks through in, in its fullness, and we in our fullness. Carl Jung, who's known as a de really founding the field of depth psychology, basically said we have two sides in our humanity and our psyche. And one side is the persona. The persona is the mask that we wear in the world. Some of that mask has some authentic characteristics to it, but some of it has some inauthentic characteristics to it. But how we formed that mask was by society and our children, or our, our parents and our teachers when we were children, teaching us what is unacceptable and what is acceptable. And the persona was really the mask of what is acceptable, what is desirable. It's the good girl and the good boy, the nice boy and the nice girl. It's the polite one, the kind one, the one who shares their toys, who knows how to make mommy and daddy happy. That's the persona that we're encouraged to create, that mask to wear in the world. Today we're really talking about, in part, that other piece, because it's that which we were told is unacceptable, that is undesirable in the world, that we needed to push aside. So negative feelings, you know, worries and, and anger and sadness and jealousy and envy and all of those things to be repressed. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to experience that, right? So we get that message over and over again. And even aspects of ourselves, you know, the human majority decides what is acceptable and what is unacceptable according to that prototype. So if, you know, if your hair is the wrong color or your skin is not the color of the majority or your sexual orientation is not that of the majority or your gender is not, you know, whatever that is, you know, that becomes even a part of the collective shadow or the, the shadow of us as, 
personal beings, that which we hide to the best of our ability if we are able to hide. And even those of us, those prejudices and those biases that we all have, that too gets hidden, right? Because who wants to be thought of as prejudiced or biased? Probably nobody in this room anyway. I know I certainly don't want to be seen that way. And so that too goes into the shadow. So it is these repressions that actually get create this thing called the shadow. It's not real, but it sure feels real. <laughs> And we're not aware of it because that is the very essence of what shadow is. It's in the unconscious, the unknown. Our work, as Jacqueline Small says, the author of The Sacred Purpose of Being Human, our real spiritual work, she refers to as shadow work, she calls the holy grit. The shadow work is the holy grit of the journey. And it is absolutely essential. We will never affirm our way <laughs> to, to the kingdom. You know, and, and this is one of those things about new thought that we, it's a really important message for us in new thought because we tend to be really positive and look to the, the, the um, positive characteristics that we want to uplift and want to become and want to embody. And we can talk about that so much at the expense of this other half of us that is waiting in the, in the shadows, literally, in the hiding places, in the repressed places, deep in the subconscious. And it isn't until something comes along to trigger it that it pops up and pops out. Carl Jung said that, that we call it fate in our lives. He said specifically that once we can see the shadowy parts, I'm sorry, that repressed, ugh, what did he say? That which we do not bring to consciousness appears in our lives as faith, fate. So that which we don't bring in a conscious way into the light, it will come up on its own, <laughs> you see? And those conflicts will come up and divide the pieces of us out in front of us and the rest of the world. So better we just do our work. <laughs> so it doesn't come up Si or out sideways or, or come up in those places where we don't wish for it to come up. But we instead are doing the holy grit, the inner work, the shadow work, to meet and greet like Dorothy, toe to toe, even though she's scared, with that witch. Eye to eye with that witch. Being willing to see and to look and to allow and to, to acknowledge that even though in a way we understand in the absolute realm, in the spiritual realm, this thing is a figment of our imagination. It's not real. It's a created thing. It sure feels real, <laughs> right? When we're, we're faced with these things, it feels real. So what about all these characters of the Wizard of Oz? They all represent these different aspects of the shadowy nature that we want to bring forward from the subconscious up into the conscious light of day so we can see and kind of sort, <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, I disowned that piece of me. I think I'll have that back. I want the full spectrum of human emotions, even if it does include anger and grief and worry and concern, because it is a part of the full expression of who we are as human beings. And if we don't know those things, if we cast those out and say that we are somehow separate from them, there's a piece of our humanity and our soul that goes with that and a piece of our empathy to understand one another. Years ago, I was in a relationship, and my partner had this idea that we should try an open relationship. And I thought, well, this could be really a great spiritual exercise, you know? <laughs> it could really push us through our limits, you know? And we could grow through this and, you know, move beyond any kind of jealousy that might arise. And besides, I'm not a jealous person. You know, I really thought about that. I was like, you know, I can't really think of any times I've been particularly jealous. It shouldn't be that hard. So I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> Guess what I got to own? Jealousy. Yeah. Oh, it came. It came in all its ugly colors. It came in its wickedness. It came in its fiery redness. It came as like a belly fire in me. It came when I snatched letters from the mailbox and didn't let her see them. <laughs> and it freed me. It freed me. It absolutely freed me. And that's what shadow work is about. 
We own the things that we have cast out to say, that's not me. Catch yourself when you say, I never or I always. Oh, cue, shadow is, is up. <laughs> shadow wants to be seen. So look, pull, take that rock, that beautiful crystal, that divine essence that you know that you are, pick it up and turn it over and look at the underbelly. Look at the part that's been sitting in the dirt, because that's where the work is. That's the holy grit that gets us to the fullness of who we are as human divine beings. And it, by casting things out, and I always, I never, it, it doesn't work that way. But it does give us the cue as to where to go. So for me, when I owned that jealousy, when I fully let myself experience it and feel it all the way through, I felt Free. I felt renewed. I felt more compassionate, more empathetic toward others when they felt jealousy and toward myself. I suddenly knew, and it opened up all the emotions that had been hidden you know, behind the rock, so to speak. When we free one, when we free one shadow and recognize it and bring it into the light and say, oh, this isn't so horrible. This isn't shameful to feel this thing. This isn't so embarrassing, is it? You know, just to say, oh, okay, so here it is. Here we are. You know, here we are, these experimental beings on the planet, right? Spiritual beings learning to be human and then remembering that we are divine. It's a beautiful, beautiful journey, but it won't be as potent. It won't be as amazing. It won't be as bright and brilliant if we push the pieces that we don't think are desirable and create this kind of entity of shadow. And so it's unearthing it, freeing it, looking at it, confronting it, and then deciding what pieces do I want to bring back in and what do I want to let melt away. And that we get to do that in a real clear conscious way when we bring it up from the basement, so to speak, into this conscious realm. So the first of the characters is the phony wizard. The phony wizard is like the persona. It's that mask, right, that's just sort of floating around, and then there's all the smoke and mirrors, right? So the persona, there it is for us, and we know that behind the curtain is, you know, the, the real man, and that this whole thing is just a phony thing that he's putting out in front of us. And so we can ask ourselves, where am I being inauthentic? Where am I putting up that kind of, you know, do you ever come to unity and you think you have to be in a happy, clappy mood because we're an upbeat crowd? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But if you're in a lousy mood or you're, you know, or you just you got something heavy on your heart, I want you to know it's okay. <laughs> to, and and I'll, I think everybody in this room would say it's okay to be exactly where you are. In fact, it's welcome. We welcome all just exactly as we are, perfect and whole in this moment, even if we feel like things are a mess. Because it is in embracing that and being in that and recognizing it and being okay with that that we can finally let it go. Otherwise, we're just all kinds of energy spent trying to push it away and put on that persona that is just the phony wizard blowing smoke and mirrors. <laughs> And then there is the dark wood, right? When we enter into this realm, when we begin to do the shadow work, we come into that haunted space, right? We're off, the clear, we're off trail now. We're off that clearly marked road, the yellow brick road, and we're in a place where there really is no map. It's just, it's dark, it's murky. We're not sure where to go. We're, you know, in that kind of, ha, I've entered the wood, the dark wood, the haunted forest. But it is in that realm that we will come upon the things that will lead us to meet and greet the darkest places so that the full light can shine through. And so what do we meet but the distractions? Anybody ever hear of monkey mind? <laughs> Those flying monkeys, right? They're just off in every different direction that we could possibly go. In, the, in our story, actually, they're leading us to where we want to go, even though we think, oh, how repulsive. We don't want to go to the shadow. It's the worst thing in the world, right? We, we do everything we can to stay away from it, yet now we're, at, we're there, we're almost there, so we might as well just follow through, right? It, it happens in slight ways, in small ways. Yesterday I, was, I found myself distracting myself um, and you know, looking at my email and getting kind of off down on different rabbit holes, and I really needed to be working on my talk. 
And so, <laughs> and so I, instead of just saying, oh, how am I being, you know, how am I procrastinating or how am I um, distracting myself to look at what was really going on? Oh, so why am I procrastinating? And then to see, oh, there's a persona there. And it, the persona is the perfectionist, you know, it's part of that, that mask. And so the perfectionist will often procrastinate <laughs> because, you know, well, if it, happened at the last minute, then it can't be perfect, so it lets us off the hook. You see how, strange, how wild we make things? How unnecessarily crazy and twisted we make things? And instead, if I could just look a little deeper and say, well, why would I even procrastinate? Why would I even try to pull myself off? Well, underneath that would be maybe a feeling of inadequacy in some way, or unworthiness in some way. Anybody ever feel that? <laughs> right? We all feel that. And so it's once we recognize what we feel and experience is a universal experience, the shame drops away. The embarrassment goes away. And that's the reason why we hit it in the first place, right? It doesn't have to be hit anymore. There it is. Oh, everybody can see. Not so scary, right? We all have our moments. And then we move forward through it. And it's freeing. It breaks, it breaks the truth of who we are, freed, so that we can be that. We can be that light. We can be that love. We can be on purpose. We can be at our best. And so it's working with these places that we get tripped up in the little ways that will lead us to the dark wood of the deepest kinds of shadows like the Wicked Witch. Now, the Wicked Witch is really created out of a lot of dimming light over time. You know, we often talk about in our Unity Basics class, you know, how could this person have the divine light within them when they are doing such evil things in the world? This is the one that always seems to trip up the class, you know? And we have to go back to its behaviors, not the essence of the person. And so maybe could you just imagine that Hitler or someone like that just had like a little tiny spark of divinity, a little bit of light in there somewhere, and it's just been hidden over time, covered up over time, with all kinds of shadowy ideas and limited ideas of what that being and this life is all about. And it's freed in some way as the truth moves ahead, as we open up that which is ours to open up, as we begin to understand. The wicked witch then has become so focused on the outer. She thinks that this, this um, power is outside of herself, that those capacities, the ruby slippers, the magic is outside of herself. And she's so single-minded that she can't see beyond her long, warty nose, you know? That it's only about her and getting this one thing. And she has nobody in her life, no love. You, sh you heard her say how lonely she was in her castle. Everybody that's there is a slave to her. That's how bad life has gotten. When you see somebody in the world and you say, oh, that's a bad person, think instead about what a person in pain is, to, is there before you. Hurting people hurt people, right? Hurting people hurt people. And so that's really what the witch is. She's hurt, and she's become that over time. And we're going to find out soon what becomes of her. So as we do our shadow work then, and we recognize that, that the shadow is actually, it's real because we created it, but, but, and we, can't, we don't want to deny its existence. But on the other hand, eventually when we go and meet with it and greet it, we realize it wasn't really real in the first place, not in the absolute sense, not in the divine understanding, not in that realm. It's a relative thing. Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, put it this way, and this is one of the easiest ways for me to understand it. He said, evil is a parasite. And when its relationship with the host has been severed, it no longer has a life. And so it is for us to recognize where are the parasites that are feeding off of our energy field, because that's exactly what this repressed part of us does, these disowned parts of us. And when we can recognize that and sever the relationships that need to be severed and reown the parts of us that were cast out, then there is this sense of freedom and renewal. 
So what becomes then of Oz and our friends? Where will they go next? And what will they do when they finally meet the witch and get into the castle? Are you curious? Would you like to know? Let's see. Toto has found Dorothy's friends, and they are scouting out the witch's castle from a short distance. Okay, okay, I got a plan. Yeah. I got a plan. Yeah. We, the use, you're going to lead us in the castle. Me? Yeah, you are. Yeah, me, me, me. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, I'll do it for Dorothy. Wicked witch and no wicked witch. Gods and no gods. I'll tear them to pieces. I may not make it out alive. Go in there anyway. Just do me one favor, fellas. What? Talk me out of it. <laughs> so bad, was it? I mean, it's a little scary. It's a little scary for sure. It's very scary sometimes. But we can do this. We can do this. We can sweep back in that which we want to keep and sweep out that which we don't want. Do you know the broom prayer? Uh, well, I want to invite you to, do the brain, to enjoy the broom prayer, so you may wish to close your eyes. On the heroine's journey, there is a boon, a reward, and it is the broom that the wizard sends us off to get. And so it is with this broom that I reclaim power, having melted that shadowy side of myself. The swift and powerful activity of the Holy Spirit now sweeps from my conscious awareness all thoughts all beliefs, all people and actions that are not in accordance with the divine principles of truth. And the swift and powerful action of the Holy Spirit sweeps into my consciousness the people, the thoughts, the beliefs, and the actions that are in accordance with divine truth and principle. And so with this, we are whole, a new piece of ourselves reclaimed, 
some aspect of you that has been tossed out has been brought back in to the truth of who you are, and others have been melted away. We're not totally out of the woods yet, so stay tuned for two more weeks on the journey of the Wizard of Us. God bless you.